It's your boy Pope's important live from location I cannot disclose because y'all niggas is apps. Yes, sir. And, and we just out here about greatness and you know reporting live from Lagos, Nigeria. I Alte Daily every day. And this is your daily dose of alternates. So I said, okay, that evening I must start up some courage. I went to they call it the forum at Hatfield. Went to the forum. The night was lit. I think it was a Tuesday night or something like that. And this guy Edgar EMT he was the DJ. And I think also like a promoter sign. And so like I just saw him on the mic. He was going mad. You feel me? Like he was going stupid with it. And at that point, like I was already rapping. But like I wasn't I wasn't in the point of having deals or anything. I was rapping, so I knew like I can go on a mic. And my friend Tobu D was a DJ and I'd seen him DJing. So I, I've I've seen what it looks like, and I think I'm a fast learner. So like I just need to see you. I don't even need to like learn from you. I just need to see you do it, and watch your body language, and I can oh, uh, I can kind of simulate the energy behind that body language. Like oh, I feel this guy's vibe. So it's not even about the work. It's about how he is, the way he's moving, the way he's gesticulating. I'm like oh, I like I like that. So I said, fuck it, I'm going to wait till the end of this rave and I'm going to talk to that guy. Because I always see the flyers and I keep seeing his name. I know that name, that name is on flyers and it was popular in town then. So I went, I spoke to him and he was just very like dismissive of me. And I kind of took that kind of like funny and I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be the biggest promoter in this town so but moving on so i just kept doing that i just felt like everything i was doing was attached to an external factor yeah and i felt like that wasn't sustainable like i was good at doing it but that didn't mean that that was me so i'd quit this restaurant and one morning i'm chilling i've been asking myself these questions asking myself these questions and then one day i have this intervention from the Holy Spirit or from the universe or like my my angels whoever, whoever whatever name works for different people God you know anyone the supreme being infinite intelligence anyone you pick uh, you know anyone you pick is and I had that encounter you know it was a spiritual sit down I dude now ask yourself all those questions you're asking yourself so I asked myself again I said so Tell me why you've been doing this. I said, I did this. What about rap? This. What about this? That. The voice then said, what is that one thing you've ever done that nobody made you do and you never saw anyone do? It's like, that's a good question. So I'm sitting on that. I'm sitting on it. Then I'm like, I wrote two movies when I was like 14. And that didn't come from anyone. I was taking a shit. Yeah. I was taking a shit and for some weird reason I was just like you know what I think I think a story came to my head I accommodated it I cut the cruise and it became fun and I thought wow this is actually a good story mm. I should write this down so I started researching how do you write a script so then I, I tried to write it in script format so I wrote it my English teacher saw it and I think she stole it because since I, all I remember is they said, ah, your English teacher came today and she was like, who wrote this thing? And she couldn't believe it. And within that week or two weeks, you know, no man, no man. <laughs> <I'm okay. laughs> she, <laughs> she ran. Yes, giddy, we'll she, never bro, she ran me straight. She thought to herself. She ran me straight, bro. And so I think I said, yes, that's it. Film. And then I started to realize that from that moment and then I started to pay more attention to me in that light. And I started to notice that, bro, I'm always thinking in sets. Like, I, I think in frames. So when I'm even thinking of something, I'm thinking about it through the lens of a camera. That's the way it looks in my mind. So even my imagination is a film. I see my imagination in films like they were filmed so i was like oh okay now that's like validation that i need to be like okay that's something in me so after paying attention to that then like i mean at that point i'd dj'd i'd been a promoter i'd been an artist 
and I just finished studying business psychology for my MSc. Mm. So at that point, I my approach was different. I was like, okay, I'm gonna approach this thing from a different perspective. So what I started to do was like, I was like, okay, I want to do film, but these are my obstacles: the budget of buying this equipment, the crew, the the technical know-how that you need. So I was like, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to become an editor. Okay, then. I was not looking at it, the roles, industry roles. I was seeing this gaffer. I read it like no, no, DP, no. This director, eh, but this director and DP. It seems like I want to be two of them, but ah, uh, this, but ah, uh, then I go to editor, post production. I was like, hmm, funny enough, I did because when I was in UK, I had a movement called TVLR Travelers. Shout out to all another, my travelers. Another gang. Another, yeah, trust me, I'm. Uh, <laughs> That's all I know, bro. That's Gangs, all yeah. I know. Just gagging, <laughs> creating alliance. That's, I just love it, you know? So we had this TVLR travelers lane. In the travelers lane, we're gagging. And one of our guys, Dillimore, Jeff Smoke, man, a bad man, you know, he, he, did a vid, he did a song. And I was like, guy, this song needs a video. Don't worry, I'll shoot it. So I shot it. Then my girl, like, she had a macbook and macbooks were hard to find and every when you have a macbook i think then it comes with like i'm guard maybe no no no, final cut yeah the time so you had final cut on it so i was like rah i was like be what far now make i use this your lappy now almost she was like nah, nah. i was like calm down i have our future now <laughs> make i just edit this video with your lappy so every now and then i'll take the laptop so i did the whole video and back then there were no youtube tutorials mm. so then another just the way i realized oh i think in camera now i'm realizing that my first music video that i edited i edited it and i didn't use any tutorial but i just instinctively knew how to maneuver it i guess maybe because i was doing a little bit of photoshop already because when we do promote when we're promoting events i make the flyers mm. so i was in on it in a little so that now gave me the extra motivation like yes I'm actually a good editor mm. without even editing. I just said yes. Man, a bad man. Man, a, the fact that I could do that, I edited a video and I didn't use tutorial. So then I spent the next three months on YouTube, Yo, sorry, Mr. watching Mr. videos, Mr. watching Mr. videos, edit more focused Shout on being an editor. Shout out to University of YouTube. Y'all niggas, be, you need to be giving out certificates to your like alumni because you got thousands of graduates with first classes and two two and two ones. <laughs> we we all out here and shout out to YouTube, man. You know now YouTube, yeah. So I, I was on YouTube three months and then I started to narrow it down and then I narrowed it down to okay, storytelling is the important thing. If I can tell a story, it doesn't matter what camera I use. It's not about the camera, it's about the person using it. So I took the attention away from feeling like the barrier to entry was so huge, right? Then I bought a Samsung S4 Mini because at that point the phone had 4K. And boom, did my first video. Uh huh. I want to peace and for the journey. You finally got yourself out of Lagos. You yes. Know? Yes. How are you feeling now? In one word. <laughs> I think clueless. Clueless? Yeah. Because, I mean, I think even when I had my first imagination, I guess there was a reason why it took me that long mm. to have that. So, even though something else was awoken inside of me, there were still remnants of who I already am, which is the clueless guy before that moment. Mm. So, throughout the journey, you're still c- clueless. So, there are things that happen that you need time to get. So, at that moment, you know, I, th- I think most importantly, I was just happy to be leaving Nigeria. Um, and I think for me, because of anxiety, I spend most of my time calculating and preempting every possible scenario that is about to happen. 
So I spend most of my time doing that, fantasizing. Ah, so when I get to school, I will now meet one mad babe. Then me and I will now start taking walks on the air. <laughs> of which I never did any of that. I did other things that I didn't see. But the things I was seeing, you know, I was just daydreaming probably and just creating nice scenarios in my head, casting myself up, you know. <laughs> yeah, I probably did a lot of that. What movies? I remember that was where I saw. I remember the movie I saw was Forty Year Old Virgin, if I'm correct. Or maybe that might that might have been maybe my first time on a plane, because now those are two different moments. But I remember watching Forty Year Old Virgin on a plane. Yeah. Now you get there. Mhm. Yeah, I was late as well. Three weeks late. So, so you get the get the beauty. A kid from night, how do you interact? What is it like? Are you straight up a like, job? This is what it is. That's or, a good one. That's a very good one because the atmosphere in UK then was it was harsh. It was harsh in the in the sense of like you know we ain't getting no love. I mean we getting some love, but we ain't really getting no love. You know that's the era of the freshies, mm. the era of the afs, mm. the era of the off the boats. Mm. You know that those were like your classic terminology that you would use for somebody who is African who just like came to the UK. And were they call you that? Oh yes, you are an af, you are a freshie, and you are off the boats. You you can't miss it. That I mean, funny enough was that I didn't. Once again, there's a re, there's a good reason why cluelessness is great, <laughs> because I you feel me? It's like I see what interests me, <laughs> and everything else, if it is not um, dramatically introduced to my reality, I will not see it. You have it needs to be. You get me? It needs to come with some force some drama so that's like people like me i learned the hard way because i forgot the city so i no worry i get coconuts i know the year word <laughs> now when so like it was it was fun because i mean shout out to josie appleton josie appleton was like the first girl that gave me love like like i said those are the things i can tell you about because that's what i really connect with i connect with romance women and i connect with like brotherhood yeah. that's who I am at the core I've always been that from a kid so I can always remember the first girl that gave me love and my first gang I will always remember that anywhere I go you know the first niggas that held me down when I went from stranger to gang member mm. <laughs> because it's a it's a it's a rite of passage you know you get yeah. to a new place you don't know nobody on your J's but then like I can never be on my J's I believe every dude need a gang Cause you ain't you ain't a dude if you don't have a gang so <laughs> so yeah you yeah so like first girl was Josie Appleton you know um she pulled a great move so back then I didn't know but there's two buses you can take you can take the 610 or you can take the 602 or something like that from train station and one will take you and stop you somewhere and one takes you to college lane or something like that but long story short was that she was on the fast bus <laughs> yeah yeah one takes you straight and it stops only at asda at the town center to and then you it takes you straight to the next bus stop but the second one stops at every stop mm. but this girl saw me at asda she came off the bus sat next to me and got on the slow bus with me she moved to you guys. <laughs> that way when i entered the bus when i knew she moved to me was when she came and sat next to me and then months later i figured out wait josie didn't have to come off that bus uh, i didn't know that there was i was waiting for the second you, one but you didn't know your name. yeah yeah <laughs> she was the one that put me onto skepta um bbk yeah yeah and she she kind of said oh you don't know are you then uh jamie was hot serious jamie yeah. was hot so like she was like what like where well, like she was like oh i just came from a video with like bbk i was like because I was rapping, I was, maybe I was doing some musical, so she yeah. felt maybe I'll be tapped in, and I think she was trying to say I should maybe 
fuck with them or like if I'm serious or she can link me up or then yeah, ego now I was like what's this girl talking about I beg you know so shout out to Josie shout out to like uh, Mwansa Mwansa was my Zimbabwe friend who was my first nigga to hold me down Mwansa Musa Gali mm. um, and Albert you know those were the um, those are the guys but like there's always this trend in my life where when I go new places I say this is funny but it's crazy maybe that's the, the cause of a rebel um, I always meet people that are good for me both as a person mm. and but maybe not for the lifestyle that I want to live mm. yeah so they always they ground me well as a person if I wanted to be a responsible society person you know those are my friends yeah but yo we need to turn up <laughs> we need to disrupt this beat yes and these guys are not out here trying to disrupt so things I'm link you guys so i'm gonna link you guys later of course. and and i guess it's balance it's, it's not balanced because that's yeah. what causes this whole cool kid because if you look at it from yeah but in, i mean for you did it give you some sort of balance that you know because guys? i always deep i would always end up leaving these guys oh. yeah because like it, it, it comes a time when I'm so deep in this life that when I go chill with them, it's weird. You know, the type of people weird. I'm bringing with me, yeah, it's not the same way. So I just have to just dip. But it's always love. Like, they're still always proud. Like, wow, I can't believe you went out there and you yeah, did all that shit. Like, just, yeah. Man. But deep inside, I always feel like those guys are actually the ones that could have, like, helped your life in a, okay. in a positive way and in a longevity way yeah. because in this other lane you're in the streets it's a jungle don't know, don't know. these you guys your friend to, today one or two along the way, tomorrow one yeah. thing happen it will smash your cheek <laughs> now you get you get because now it is a cool guy yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is a cool guy it is a cool guy yeah, so we get hey, so that's like the game. you feel me charges to the game yeah, so it's wild out here yeah so you then learn stuff and i'm like damn like i know my nigga musa ain't gonna do that to me <laughs> let, let, listen, for those listening at home let me tell you something yeah musa gonna smash your chick ah not not musa but somebody ah let me not call this <laughs> but you guys don't know these niggas but somebody like ah no let me just say it but yeah i don't ah those, no. guys. those guys those ah, guys they will smash Dude, your listen. chick bro i'm just like the whole time Michael. Yeah, but bro, you know the funny part is that I'm I'm also that guy. Do you get so it's like when you're doing it, it's sweet. Oh, but when you get die, it's the worst feeling in the world. So yeah. like that's why like nowadays, I mean I try to I'm I'm not that guy anymore. You can't, you can't be now. If it's yeah. your if it's your bedroom though, you can't. But yeah, you can't day, do that to your bedroom. If it's the next man, like, we cool. Like man, that guy, we say well gone, but it's not my done. Yeah, like it's that. not my done well, like your that. Chicks yeah, your chicks that, right? Even though you man were together like that, true still, still, said you're just having a vibe. Still, bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. She she wanted it. Yeah. Cause... I don't want to tell you, but bruv, she actually came on to me. Bro, heavy. You, know, <laughs> you, know, you know the funny thing. You know what I respect, which is very rare. Mm. Is when you have a conversation with another man mm. whom you're not even that type of boys like that, mm. or maybe you have a mutual friend and he's like, "Yo, you're, you're running that," and you're like, "Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm running that too." And he's like, "Ross, say no more." Like, oh, keep it that low. is hard. And, I've never had it, that experience, bro, bro. I've had a few of those, but what it is is what I've come to realize is, and this is why, why Adam and Eve happens when mm. it comes to women. Mm. A lot of men can't really handle the other side like if what can't they handle they can't handle like there's the another person side. oh yes now nah. so it's most like, niggas can't take that most shit. niggas and especially if you like I, her i've had to to learn the hard way to understand that you might see a guy and be like yo cousin you see that girl yeah that like you're trying to cut bro mm. <laughs> you said you're zimming but i'm not like listen blood i'm not i'm just like brother but can i ask a question game. why is it that men are twisted <laughs> Me included. <laughs> maybe that? maybe some other guys have evolved. Oh, but me have not that? evolved. <laughs> now why does a nigga want the girl that he's sure none of his niggas or anybody he's associated with has smashed? Why does a guy want a girl? Yeah, so that now his guys has smashed. Now if I see if I see a babe, yeah, and I know that my guy who's not in this our circle yeah. has given i feel obliged 
to warn my guy yeah. before he goes in. Yeah. And if my guy should find out that I knew such information and I didn't tell him, it's problem. Yeah. Like normal, yeah. She just be like, oh yeah, man, yeah. And like obviously, like she she has the right to express herself yeah. in it. <laughs> them and ones. Them ones. And like oh, now, my man is like on that, and it's like, ah, right, so I don't know what they got going on. Yeah. I could just respect him and just be like, he likes her, she likes him. What I know don't really matter. But my guy, he would probably be like, guy, you stupid. How you not go tell me that kind of important information? But, but do you know why? Because it's the power of intel. For example, mm. girls, when a girl comes to you and goes and tells you later, after weeks of speaking, it's like, she starts saying things about herself. You'd be like, you did your intel. I'm, at this point, time, you're mm, friendly. You're like, mm, yeah, because she's mm. going to ask around, what's he like? Yeah, what's that guy like? What's yeah, yeah, doing? yeah. Do you even know about your. Yeah, your your record. No, surely they know in performance. They're like, like, ah, yeah. Like women, they go and find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are FBI's. Yeah, but the problem with guys is like, what what a woman presents, you take it as that value. So, for example, a chick could have been a jersey with a yeah yeah of man across the road yeah and because she's moved from north london now to, to east london she's, she's like i've changed my life oh no you can't you can't talk to me like that yeah no, yeah no, if you want to take me out you gotta do it i got worth yeah i've got and you know and then some next guy who's supposed to be a top boy is there doing up all the lunches and all it's of that me. meanwhile after he's doing all of that and he's not even mashing uh. this the guys when she goes home home yeah weekend, at the yard yeah the guys in north are um, <laughs> mashing out on a light dixie morley's vibe you feel me so it's, it's crazy like, you didn't get the intel but if you got the intel what what difference would no, the, intel I, I, I the intel make <laughs> yeah 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 the that's intel, the part the intel what the intel does is you just doing this okay so it's like it's mm, like mm, mm, it's like um mm. it's like a politician going to power and saying in nigeria going i'm here i'll provide what if drugs. you like the babe? If you like the babe, like genuinely, no. If and this is what I'm saying, if you like the babe, yeah. But now you is, have that it intel. It is on you. Child. Yeah, they don't you claim. Don't, they this. don't yarn you. Don't, don't be saying your own no yarn you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> even if you guys are official, she may. She may, ways. yeah. But even if she turns her ways, There's, you you're still gonna that battle that shit. Somebody always has a, a specky. Mm. And you have to be prepared that if one day the guy does that, say he won't now why we know they marry again? <laughs> now why? You feel me? Now why though? You, you, no, ain't nobody you, trying to be caught slipping. Someone still got shares in that company. The same way someone has shares in your heart. We trying to buy all the shares. <laughs> At that time, when things are going well, someone might think, "Ah, oh, with this being, I have all the shares, hundred percent." I'll be there looking at you like, bro, you might have 80. Yeah, 80, which had, is nice. I, I, my 20 is strong. Yeah, I once had 82. Bruh. And the fact that, and you know what having 20 is? Having 20% is like, that's always going to be my G for life. If she's mm-hmm. actually a friend. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. going to be my G for life. But when she's single, yeah, no, we know. Or if she's not single, and it's a rainy day. And it's a rainy day. She just happens and to be And the situation in. fits. You understand? My guy says she happens to be in East. And I happen to have a free, free y'all. y'all. <laughs> You, you know that one's there. No, man, no, man. <laughs> you get me? So yeah. Those type of things, it's just like, but that's the thing. I just come to realize that most men yeah. can't, because you can They actually, can't handle it. You can actually be with a thing. Yeah. That, she do a thing. Yeah. Bro, like, do you know that? But other niggas won't take that from that, you. Do you know that all the, all the jerseys that we know growing up all got married first? Hmm. Because they got that, that out is mad, of the way. Though. But they could always cook and they clean it, they take care of the yard. Mm. All the jerseys, I swear that all the jerseys that me and my boys know, they don't stress up, you, bro. Married, and the guys that are married are older guys who they probably let them know that they say, tapped was, in. Was, yeah, was, they tapped when in. When I was younger, I was really yeah, wondering. yeah, yeah. I'm ready to, and they seem which happy. I think is gr- is they all right. Happier than the yalem that was on this whole square vibe. Mm. And now, and now married, they're like the husbands there slapping them, slapping, and they're running like like quick things. You know, you, you yeah, see what I'm saying? trying to wear hijabs and that. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. That that's not a direct. I didn't experience yeah. that. You get it? You get You feel me? Nah, cause like yeah, I feel I feel so to myself. Like, but like I can't deny the fact that even just knowing that this guy 
has smashed the chick that I'm with. I'm not comfortable. I don't even care if you were the first. Well, do I you, don't care. Do you care if he's not your guy? The fact that you're there in my physical environment is like, you feel me? So, like, naturally. Yeah. Okay. But like, I've I've gotten to the point where I'm like, bro, that is some dumb ass shit. But now, ch- now check this out me? now. This, and this is the beautiful thing about life when we get perspective. Mm. As much as you feel that way, mm-hmm. what about, imagine you met a chick mm. that had never mm. really been around. Maybe she had one boyfriend when she was 16 to 16 like 22. 22. Broke up, dated someone I like that case study. I like that case study. She's only ever dated two guys. That's a nice case study. And then, <laughs> she's out with you. Mm. And as a top this, guy this, and not, not much has happened you yeah. know she's yeah you feel me and mm-hmm. you guys are on the level whereby she, you guys both think you are the one for each other like, okay this is a marriage but she's a solid girl yeah and you had to be honest with her like okay she said listen i just want to know for my own she'll be around situations where like there's things that are clean yeah bro yeah 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 which happens on a daily <laughs> 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 it's not double standards right you feel me that's why i said i would with the knowledge i have i wouldn't subscribe to making that an issue when i know that even me myself like yeah. i'll be i'll be out here too and that's the game it's the game you just can't you just can't be mad can mm. be but niggas are still out here still hoping that's like true. like you know like me now personally now nah, like i don't even like be thinking about it like or what happened but still like i wouldn't want I guess the worst part of it is not is when let's say for example you're chilling with your man then right yeah. cool and this girl you like her right every guy wants that if niggas are talking about their babe they're like ah that babe like she's top quality she's a pie yeah. like bro who they smash her nobody knows <laughs> you get it but yeah hell no it's the, it's the truth i don't know what you think but then when you're chilling with the man them and the girl's name come I'm like ah da, come on for you no be that way where i see for that guy has for bgc daddy where i wish she come there we we i got it you now if i shout she come up for there i hear say she, this guy collect her number she still go that one at that point i'm like oh man but i'm not really like oh, i'm just like what would you do it's for me yeah i'm a triple og nah, a triple <laughs> hey hey so, so you're gonna be like hey now nah, for me it's like it's like damn man she could have really been but straight away like i'm mm, ready mm. that putting things in pockets like, in that moment i know it's not going anywhere what if what if before that moment you was actually like feeling that you yeah, was already thinking sense. about that's what i'm saying uh, from this baby that, sweet from that, uh, moment, from that moment you're so gonna change what it, is, is what it is is we can have a conversation about it later. Now, that's a good one the girl can actually tell that you know what that guy and I actually never. Yeah, because like, man, them actually be lying. Man, them be lying. Man, them be lying. Actually, tell you that. There's that part too. She, him too. She can also be like, when I met him, he came across this way, mm. and before it was it was going somewhere, but then maybe he ghosted her or something. So yeah, yeah, those yeah, are, yeah. When yeah. you have the conversation from her own perspective, you look, you even gauge if she's lying. Mm-hmm. That's not normal. Yeah, hey, you ask yeah. about one or two other situations, and also I also feel like what is key is, is to actually have conversations with people when you have and you ask because men we don't we don't process the questions that women that we ask women or we don't process the answers so for example a woman wants to know the kind of father you be she you mm, date for a year or six, mm, mm, date for six weeks she mm, wasn't the kind of man you be like yeah, one yeah, random day you guys yeah. she just say um are you close to your grandma you just be like oh, yeah, yeah grandma is good you just, are you close oh, to your mom you are just, you you're not asked why she's like oh nothing we're just wondering she's building yeah, up she's points. building a, a man, profile uh, man we just say yeah fine i like yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> and that's it and bro that's so poor so what that I do, is so basic I do the same thing women do I ask questions I base <laughs> yeah, on mm-hmm, their answers mm-hmm. I do it randomly as well based on their answers I know the kind of person you are so even if you bring your ex is a balu and I'm like I can't leave this yeah 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 that's, yeah, that's yeah but yeah yeah you can remove that I, based yeah, on the, the kind of person, person you are funny enough a girl actually opened bro shorties man like see when i was growing up yeah. shout out to lulu but lulu you taught me the wrong things <laughs> but lulu you tried for me it worked until it stopped working you know like um it's great to have friendship in women 
because like yeah. back then man them like we really had like a limited scope of life <laughs> she gets is that bah, 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 very limited but then like even that thing you said is like is a girl in a my baby she's like yo dude like you need to ask questions and you need to listen to what you're being told right. you can't just like go off of yeah surely pretty yeah we having this cool laughs i mean except maybe even even if it's a situation of just like hitting hitting and hitting at this point even at that there's still like collateral damage mm. because you're still in my space you're still going to influence me it's not only when i fall in love with you or in a relationship that i start to soak up some of your demons you know what i'm saying so like it's still it's still even in friendship even in like daily interaction you still have to consider okay who's this person about what's yeah. like what's like the in- intention or like what is your energy like and, and stuff like that so like talking to like women has actually made me a better man Facts. Yeah. Right. No lies. I'll be asking them all questions. Yeah, they give you different. like gems, bro. They're all different. And I always tell them the, the, the first thing to understand the woman mm. is to know that you will never understand her. But yeah, you can yeah, understand yeah. her. Ah? I said, you, yeah. just, you just, you can, yes. I you think. Would, the first trick to understand a woman is you would never understand her. Mm-hmm. But you can. Understand Which is you accepting. Accepting. Yeah. You understand? Uh, so, so, for example, we all have mothers. I'll never forget being 17 or 18, my dad pulling me to the side and letting me know that some of the things that my mom was, you know, pissing me off was only because she cared. He then said to me, you, ne- you can't deal with your mom, you never be able to deal with your wife. Bro. Once he gave me that school, my mom and I never had any. Like, when she did something, oh, I bet, mom, I bet. Like, you don't do say, nah, 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 nah. Wait for like 10, 15 minutes. 20 minutes later, I'm in our room, I'm like, mom, I beg, you know that? Because I'd realized that her reactions were never from a malicious place. Yeah, malicious place. place. And you can't let, you can't take that reaction yeah, literally. Do you understand? Now, yeah. that's me understanding that I can never understand the fact that she carried me for nine months. Mm. So, no matter if I'm 50, I'm a son, I'm wow. a baby. Wow. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I give you life. Like your dad was part of it, but I. Yeah, it's more on the I woman though. Yeah, life. yeah. She so carried the vessel. You can never understand, which is which is why like if you do something silly, the way they want to keep you when you're younger, like it's like you came inside me. It's mad love now. You, yeah, mad love, which is almost on the borderline of insanity. Of oh, and talk love as well. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. So like that's just understandable. I like what you said. Accept. It's accept. Yeah, you have to accept it. And for me, it's like I think biologically they say you know women have more receptors, neurons, or whatever they call it. We have one hundred or something. They have like three hundred or yeah. something. So ideally, they are supposed to feel more. Yeah even biologically mm. outside of not saying women are weaker or women are more emotional or stuff like that but there is biology to support that that you would feel more than i would because you your body has more receptors mm. so you would feel emotions at a deeper level you would feel epiphanies at a different level your intuitions would be on a different level that's why there's no such thing called nigger instincts <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You don't, Nigga, we we don't, don't have, have that. that. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when a woman says feminist, they will tell you, ah, my women instinct, you better follow it. <laughs> so, I mean, even women, y'all niggas need to realize that you have a lot that we don't have. Right. So, like, um, seeking for equality might not be the, the P, just acceptance. Because this whole equality P, there's so many things women can do that we can't do. And there's so many things we can do that women can't do. But now women want to do everything men do as as a form of saying that's how we can be equal. But I think it goes deeper than that. I feel like accepting our individualities and letting the other person shine in their true essence. And letting me shine in my true essence. And not feeling like you have to be me yeah. to be complete. I think, I don't know, togetherness is better than singularity, man. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a beautiful way to so It's crazy how we how we we've switched to like yeah, women. No, but that was that's great. Well you know what's so beautiful about it? Because you mentioned girls earlier, mm. Yeah, so uh, bro. Imagine if we didn't talk. Yeah, girls, niggas. <laughs> gang. Yeah. Gang. Yeah. So but yeah. 
Well, so what? Should we segue back into? No, no, we can. I think yeah, we'll, no, we'll never segue back into. It. I think I think that was just a beautiful. Yeah, that was great. That that was like a that was like yeah, something that a lot of niggas would appreciate. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. Put your brothers in game. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. See these boys, they know what they're talking. About. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, like, I'm just saying, if you're watching this out here, treat your nigga right. Um, niggas go through a lot too, and yeah, man, you know, I love women all around the world. Scary popping, how let your boy be in me pops in. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, let's, let's pop back in the middle. You're editing, for example. Um, yes. I, know I was speaking with um, Unlimited. Um, okay, now, before we even go into that, you're done with you. I mean, you have an MSc, so let's be clear. Yeah. For those who don't understand, it's. I mean, I have an MSc. Yeah, you are even doing a PhD, yeah. so you know what you know what it's, you yeah, yeah yeah. An MSc. Yeah. It's not an MSc is not an MA for those who don't know. This is the sciences. Mm, mm, yeah, in, uh, business psychology. In business psychology, going through that process. This is because obviously after that you come straight to Lagos. Yes, yes. Going through that process of of. Um, school yeah I, I can only imagine how much harder an MSc is from an MA and an MA was hard for me you know? yeah my first lecture I'm like what am I doing I'm looking at the side like, how do you what, what did I do this yeah. how, 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 how <laughs> did I do this so you're doing this and you're rapping at the time no I had run away from my I had failed that rap yeah I failed that rap so my masters was me my dad is saying you should do a masters I'm like no I'm going to dedicate my life to the arts <laughs> <laughs> I, was, you can't even do an MA. I was born for this dad and then after i failed with i lost my deal and in my opinion i had failed so let's pause there mm-hmm. what deal did you have because okay so have... when i was in the uk i had three record deals um one with marginal records and two with giant music which were like indie labels but they had some certain level of funding behind them and they were willing to like invest in music so you had, had three record deals when you yeah, as an artist yeah, as an artist yes so yeah man so um so that was that was like my backup plan you know run to daddy i mean i'm sure we we can relate <laughs> when you want to be a rebel you try you can't fuck up what you go do run to daddy now so I ran to daddy and I said, oh my daddy, I said, I'm a star, I go take it up. <laughs> yeah, it was an escape. Bruh. Yeah, but then I wanted to use the escape to, to, to for it to be a valuable escape. Yeah. So, I mean, at that point in time, from interactions with friends and like people, they always like made me feel like I had the unique perspective towards life. Mm. And like my train of thought was different. Mm. But to me, I, I wasn't wielding it. It was running loose and i was even afraid to wield it maybe primarily because christianity doesn't preach wielding your mind it preaches that you should run from the devil and face god and a mind is the yin and the yang it is both good and evil so the minute you refuse to embrace your dark side you have created a conflict which is what religion does on a human level so there was no way I could embrace my full self and allow that philosopher in me to come out with profound theories about life and make it real because to me I felt that was leading me to hell mm. yeah so it was tough so going to my masters and so okay before the masters I okay, so I already knew that okay I had a thing with philosophy psychology just mind I knew that okay there's something there's something about my mind that is not normal as a result of the way people keep talking to me when i talk to them mm. so i said okay dad i'm going to do this your master's thing mm. but on that one condition i must do what i want to do mm. she said what do you want to do i said i want to do something philosophy or psychology shall mind be mm. he goes eh, cool but you know you can't just do that so i wanted to do psychology but then you can't do clinical psychology if you didn't do uh, uh, if you didn't do courses that were science based. So we kept searching, searching, searching till we stumbled on business psychology. So that was the main reason I did business psychology for my AMSC was it was what was going to break me out from my bondage of my mind. So doing that 
gave me the courage to search deep in my mind without feeling like one i'm crazy or two i'm sinning so that i mean yeah that was that's a key part yeah so that was what so that made me see all these things in my mind as real and not fight them mm. and allow these thoughts dwell inside of me and co- even go deeper as opposed to thoughts fear run mm. Mm. you get mm. nice thoughts <laughs> curiosity find out more mm. so that was mm. that was doing that change that for me and then i could now use my mind now, um, if you had been failing, like you still failing, because the amount of times the child felt like, I mean, I can relate to that. I mean, mm. like in primary school, you know, I, didn't, I didn't take that thing seriously. Yeah, man. Who can? I didn't even take school seriously till year nine. I managed to just get biases. GCSEs, yeah, yeah. I picked coursework based subjects. Baba GCSE na espo. You feel me? A levels. I remember I bagged by A levels, you know, but. So I relate to, but the things that I never put, I didn't care about school. So when people now hear like, okay, I'm doing a PhD or whatever, mm-hmm. it's almost like that's a mad one. Yeah, you understand. It's almost, but I don't even like the because I know that when it was time to do the things I wanted to do, I'll be naturally interested in it and naturally put in the work. But when mm-hmm. you're in school, and you yeah, have to exactly. This thing and they just and like, bro, SPSS. Oh, bro, man. Stop it, bro. I know you're waking up early. I, never I hate that shit. Uh, morning person, so you're getting to school and you're just all I'm here about is break time. You feel me? But anyway, in that moment of even the undergrad, does the undergrad first let you feel like, oh my god, I can do anything nah. in terms of education, right? Like, because of failing the A levels, failing through school. I think when I did the foundation my esteem came back okay so i just dipped i went to the streets mm. i mean i feel like it might sound crazy but like some people are made for some things man you know not everyone is meant to have like a like marry and have kids and you know some people are just rolling stones man and the story doesn't usually end great which is one of the reasons why I try to deny that part of me. But the truth is, that is what I am, man. Yeah. I mean, how many African parents know what their kids really are? You get, that's an effort on your part. Or maybe they, are, they enabled it in their own way.